How's it going guys? Welcome back to another JHR review. Today I'm taking a look at my first food review and I'm really excited. These are called Keblico sticks. They're kind of like an ice cream candy snack. I got this at Daiso Japan. It's by Glico. It has multiple different flavors it looks like. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. This is what the front looks like. This is what the top looks like. Looks like it has a little printed ribbon. On the side right here, it shows you what the inside of the cone is going to look like. It has uh, chocolate at the bottom and it looks like vanilla on the top. If you zoom in right here, kind of looks like it's aerated, so it's going to be really crunchy. And then this is what the back looks like. Zoom in on the nutritional facts real quick. Looks like it contains eggs, milk, wheat, soybeans, uh, may contain peanuts, strawberry flavor. Sugars are 15 grams per one on each of them. And then the carbs are around 15 to 16 for each of them. And there's not much, uh, I mean, it's a sweet, so there's not much uh, vitamins. <laughs> All right. And then the bottom just has the barcode and the date on them. And then the other side just has a picture of the vanilla. Let's go ahead, open it up, and try them. sure if that's how it was supposed to open. These are what they look like inside the package. They're all individually wrapped, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and try the first one. And it says something on the side. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's in Japanese. It has a flower print design as well. And then it has a logo on the front as well, along with the brand name. This is what the chocolate one looks like. You can tell that it's aerated and it's probably going to be crunchy. It has some um, waffling on the side, like an ice cream cone. Let's go ahead and see how it tastes. It's really good. The chocolate on the inside is actually really smooth and um, the crunchiness of the cone um, definitely adds to that. And it looks like it's all the way through as well. I'm going to put that one to the side. Alright, let's go ahead and grab the vanilla flavor. Looks as though we have the same printing on here. This is what the vanilla one looks like. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. It kind of tastes like vanilla ice cream, to be honest. Yeah. It's really good, actually. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you which one's my favorite. So let's go ahead and try the last one, which is strawberry. This 
so this is what the strawberry one looks like. I think this one's going to be really good. I think if I could compare some of the flavors that I've tried so far, it'd be close to Pocky, which is kind of a Japanese wafer stick covered in chocolate. Let's go ahead and try this one. This one definitely tastes like strawberry Pocky. I don't know if you've ever had that before, um, but it is very similar in taste. They have it at most um, supermarkets in the Asian um, section. So I definitely would suggest trying some of it because it's really good. You get a similar taste to this. This has been the Glico Caplico ice cream candies. And out of all of these, I gotta say my favorite one is the chocolate. It is by far the creamiest and richest tasting one. And I'd say my second is the strawberry and then the vanilla. Today we have another interesting hourglass. Now some of the other ones that I've shown had a uh, moving gears and some of them moved kind of on little stairs but this one's interesting because of the way that it's shaped this one's kind of a flat hourglass now if you actually if you look on the side here there's two separate chambers that hold the green and then the kind of pinkish purple oils that's going to move through the water so let's show you from the front if we take it and we turn it upside down, you get a really interesting effect. So on both sides, both front and back, there are two different oils that are slowly dropping into these larger, kind of flat, kind of disc shapes. Let's go ahead and zoom in here real quick. One of them is kind of like pushing it out a little bit faster than the other one. And that's like kind of like they're kind of catching up with each other. Let's go ahead and push it back. If you look towards the bottom now, you notice that all of it is made it completely to the bottom chamber. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it sideways and have it do it again. But this time, see if we can get a side angled view of them falling down. So you can see right down here, you can see a little bit clearer on the green how uh, they're kind of flat and falling like that. If we turn it to the side just a little bit, you can kind of see. Let's see if we can focus it on right there. You can kind of see the, um, because of the angle, it almost looks like they're not stacked on top of each other, as you see from the front. Let's go ahead and turn the lights off. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to see how the oil looks with the different lighting. If you look right here, because of the white LEDs in the background, it completely changes the color of the oils. I know I get excited about each of the hourglasses on each of my videos, but it's just, it's really interesting how when light passes through certain things, how it's able to completely change how we perceive it. Now when you see it come out, it looks like the purple is almost kind of like a dark blue. Now this one right here kind of makes it look like they're red and really, really green. Kind of just got it's kind of just given them a solid kind of red and green color. You know what's crazy is if you focus in here at the bottom, it almost looks like blood cells or like cells when you look through a microscope. The way that they're moving and kind of stacking on top of each other. It's really interesting. 
Alright guys, this has been the Flat Hourglass by Daiso Japan. And I think that each of these are kind of unique in their own way. I'd say that my favorite one was the one with the gears, but I also really like this one as well. Today I have a fiber optic, it's a little bit tall, fiber optic illumination light. It has a base right here and a bunch of skinny little tiny um, straw-like things that come through that are going to produce the light right here. It says right down here that it takes three AA batteries. And then this is what the back looks like. That's the instructions on how to put in the batteries. Let's go ahead and open it up. This is what the base looks like. You can see inside there's little LEDs. It has a button right here. And then this is where the battery compartment is. This is what the little straw ends look like. It's going to produce the light. It has a little rubber band right here. Kind of fun to play around with. They feel funny. Kind of like a broom. Let's go and set these off to the side. We have our three Duracell batteries that we're going to put in here. That one will roll away towards me. Sorry about that. It sounds like we have some fireworks in the background. Now we got the batteries in. Let's go ahead and put the cover back on. There we go. Let's go ahead and press the button. Looks like the lights are working. The camera is kind of picking up an interesting kind of starring from the lights, it's really interesting. Let's go ahead and turn the light off. Let's go ahead and put the top onto the light. I think it needs to be pressured in. As you see, the light is moving through them. Let me try to Turn the light up a little bit so you can see it better. These are what the little tiny ends look like. There's multiple different colors running through each one of them. They're cut at different lengths. So you see from the base right here all the way up, it's cut to different lengths so you get light all the way across. See if we can get it a little bit brighter. There we go. So we have it sectioned off right here, right here, right here, and then at the very end. And this three LED setup is strong enough to push the light through all of these tiny strands individually. Let's put it this direction so you can see. There we go. As you can see, the very ends kind of have like a greenish tint to them. And then we have some reddish pink and some blue as well. This is what it would look like if you had it on your desk. 
you're able to mess around with it, kind of like a like peacock feathers almost. They're very bendy. The entire base also lights up, which is really nice. It kind of looks like a spaceship. Looks like one of the things bent off because I was being a little too rough. When you press on it like this, they kind of expand. Kind of reminds me of like a jellyfish. It's really interesting. Not gonna lie, it feels really satisfying in the hand. You can see it illuminates the palm as well, because there's enough light there. There we go. This has been the, let me remember the proper name, the fiber optic LED light from Daiso Japan. Today we have another hourglass from Daiso Japan, but this time it's kind of diamond shaped. And this one's really interesting because unlike a conventional hourglass, it actually works upside down. So if you see, I'm going to turn it upside down. And then instead of it falling from the top to the bottom, it goes from the bottom all the way to the top. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. As you can see, these ones have really small micro bubbles and they're kind of just pushing themselves from that tiny little entrance all the way to the top and starting to collect and then reform itself to you yeah, turn it over again. This one kind of has more of a slow moving process than the other ones. But the amount of green and the color that's in it, it's really interesting. You can see the uh, green is almost like parting away from the rest of it. It's almost like a kind of like a miniature honeycomb, how it all kind of mixes together. It's really interesting the kind of engineering that uh, people do for simple things like this. It's really, um, it's really interesting and magnificent how these small little intricacies and common everyday objects can be observed in a closer and more interesting way. As you see now on the top, it's starting to fully kind of accumulate more of the little green particles. I kind of like the oil ones a little bit better than this, but this one has a really interesting way that it works. It's kind of like a opposite day hourglass, or anti-gravity hourglass. Kind of shines like a diamond. Probably could have rolled it back and forth too. It's going to cause all the particles to get all mixed up. It'd be nice for something that maybe you just want to keep on your desk at work, or maybe you want to gift a friend. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. This has been the upside down, I want to call it anti-gravity hourglass from Daiso Japan. And today we have a little bit of a short video, but I think that this is a really interesting book light because it kind of reminds me of the Pixar lamp. It's LED powered and it slides either onto here or on the pages of a book. It says spot and book light, small LED light. This is what the back looks like. It looks like the batteries are replaceable. Let's go ahead and open it up.
And this is what it looks like. It has a single LED light. It has kind of a metallic finish to it to make it look like it's metal. There's a little pull tab. Let's go ahead and pull that out. It automatically turned on, which is kind of cool. The light's pretty bright, even though I have my background light for the camera on right now. Let's go ahead and set it down. And then turn the lights down. As you can see, it's pretty bright. If we wanted to illuminate what's on the page if you're trying to read. It might not look as bright on the camera, but I can fix that. There we go. As you see, it's plenty bright. Let's go ahead and remove the base. There we go. It was just in there quite a bit. So you turn it off. There's a little switch in the back. Let's go ahead and slide it into the book. It has an adjustable arm, so I can just push it back and lower it down like this. And then tap on the button. Let's turn the light down a little bit. You can also change the direction so it's not so harsh on the page. So if you just wanted to read a book in the dark, or maybe you wanted to try to attach this to one of those Kindles that aren't uh, backlit, or I mean if you're from my time period, um, maybe you could attach it to your Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, I think it works pretty well. It's really easy to just turn off and remove as well. Let's say you want it to pop it right back on here. There we go. Now it stands up as well. Alright guys, this has been the tiny LED lamp that you're able to put on your book or just like this stationery as well. Today we have a colorful silicone nightlight. As you see on the front it has a bunch of different designs. And then in these three different pictures it shows the one that you could possibly get. This is by Cool Life. And let's go ahead and check out the sides of the packaging. Right here it says that there's seven available colors that you can, I believe, uh, you touch it and it changes. And then it says available different cap designs as well. The packaging includes a silicone night lamp with a built-in rechargeable battery, one USB cable charger, and then one user manual. And then this side looks just like the other. The bottom's blank. And then up here it says Clap Night Light Cartoon by Cool Life. Let's go ahead and open it up. This is what the inside looks like. It's just sitting in there. Go ahead and pull it out. This is the one that we ended up getting. It looks like we have the USB cable in there and the instruction manual. Let's put that to the side. Its face is really cute. This is probably my second favorite one. My favorite one would be the cat one at the bottom. I like that one, but that one's also nice as well. 
I'm not sure uh, what animal it's supposed to be. Let's go ahead and focus in on its face. Its face squeezes. It's kind of cute the way it does it. This is what the bottom looks like. Let's focus in on it. I've got a power button. All right, let's go ahead and turn the light off and then see how it looks in the dark. Let's go ahead and turn the light on. This is what it looks like when it's on. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the face. Let's give the top a tap. Looks like it's changing colors now. Now it's off, and then it restarts right there. It's kind of uh, amusing how uh, much you can squeeze its face. It looks like it has a removable cap as well. Possibly, I'm not sure. me of Kirby. Alright guys, this has been the Cool Life Colorful Silicone Nightlight. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Sense8 Light Cam. This is a motion sensor security camera for outside or wherever you'd like to use it. This is what the front looks like. Looks like it's going to have some LEDs. And then there's that camera portion right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side. These are the requirements right here. Broadband internet connection, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. You can download the app, it looks like, on the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. This is what the back looks like. And then this is what the other side looks like. Looks like it has the logo. And right here are the technical specifications. It says that it has a 1080p HD video resolution, along with a 140 degrees field of view, a four times digital zoom. It has a two-way audio, which is really nice. So you can hear wherever you uh, it as well and then it also has some built-in eight gigabytes of storage and it can save to the cloud as well 12 volts one amp dc and the light is 800 lumens it also is waterproof as well in case it rains it looks like all right without further ado let's go ahead and open it up i got my trusty Humvee knife right here. Almost a complete square. And there we go. Let's put that to the side. This is what the inside looks like. Looks like we got some kind of sticker. We have
have the user manual and then this looks like the camera itself along with the charging base Let's go ahead and pop the charging base out of here let's go ahead and pull the camera out because I'm excited to see what the front of it looks like oh very futuristic let's put it down this way looks like there's some film let's go ahead and take that off this is what the front of the camera looks like looks like we have some LEDs right here we have the camera itself and then I'm not actually sure what this part is I'm not sure if it's a secondary camera or not very interesting this is my first security cam I've ever got so this is what the cord to plug in looks like it looks like they built it pretty well because you can actually move the wire on the side right here for when you mount it to the wall, like that. It looks like you can adjust it as well. It goes like this. It goes pretty far down. You can rotate it sideways as well. It's like it has a ball and joint mechanism you can tighten right here. Let's go ahead and put that down. Looks like we have a uh, extension cable, which is really nice. Looks like it's pretty long. It has uh, some hollow wall anchors and two screws going right over here. It's really nice that it comes with that. Let's go ahead and connect it to my phone and see how it works. All right, guys, so basically what I did is I downloaded the app and then I just connected it to my Wi-Fi. It was really easy. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you right here. As you can see, you can see me holding my phone. There's a little bit of input lag, but not too much. It also has a uh, two-way audio, so I can also hear myself through the phone. Go ahead and turn that down. Let's go ahead and show you real close. This is uh, 1080p quality. Really good uh, field of view. You can get my hand all the way over here. Oh, maybe. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, so the quality of the video is really good. Another really cool thing you can do as well is you can take snapshot pictures and then you can also change the quality of the stream as well. Um, it also mentions that you can, um, when somebody's passing by, it'll automatically record and then save to your cloud storage as well. So I think that that's really neat. Let's go ahead and put this to the side right here. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the camera. It's kind of a little inception here right there. It's kind of cool. It's like going into itself. But yeah, no, this is the uh, camera and it is, it is really good. Um, another thing is, is it has night vision. All right, and now that I turn the lights off, you can see that this actually has a night vision mode. So if there was like, you know, a burglar or, you know, maybe you just want to set this up to do like security monitoring when you weren't at the house, you're connected right here through your phone so you can pull it up anywhere. As you can see, you can see my hand, it's completely pretty much dark in here, but you can still see everything that's going on, which is really cool. Let's go ahead and turn the light back on and then give the camera one quick look. All right guys, this has been the Sense8 light cam.
today we have something really interesting and really special. This is a Japanese portable Famicom system. Now the Famicom was manufactured in 1983. Um, I'm not sure when this was made, probably pretty recently, but this plays the original cartridges. Um, it actually loads in right here. Let's go ahead and give you a closer look at the console itself. All the buttons feel pretty good and then this is where the cartridge actually loads inside the drive bay it's really cool super retro and then this is what the back of the console looks like it has uh, four AA batteries that go inside of there let's go ahead and set this down now you can't just have an old retro system like the Famicom and not have anything to load inside of it because if you turn it on it's just going to be a blank screen. Luckily we have two really special games as well. These are the two first Shimagami Tensei games that were actually made from the books Let's go ahead and take a look at this one first. Now, I don't speak Japanese or read Japanese, so I'm not going to really be able to tell you what this says. But this is the Japanese import. It says Namco or Namcot. I'm not sure the history behind the name of Namco. Maybe this is what it was first, just like Square Enix used to be Squaresoft and Enix by themselves before they combined together. This is what the side looks like. And then this is what the back looks like. Let's zoom in right here. Shows the gameplay. And this is the other one. The art on it's very classic. These games have to deal with uh, demons. This is what the back looks like. Very similar to the first. And then this is what the side looks like. These are both in really good condition. Without further ado, let's go ahead and put one of these in there. Let's go ahead and open it up first and see what we got inside. This is what the cartridge looks like. And it looks like we also have a booklet. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. This is what the front of the booklet looks like. It looks like we have a symbol down at the bottom and then two demons, or three actually. This is what the inside looks like. Let's flip through some of the pages. Looks like the overworld right there. I think these are just basic controls. Ah, oh, look at this. This shows the original Famicom controller, a picture of it. And that, all of those buttons are now on the system right there. Most of this is just the instructions on how to play the game. 
And there's some nice art inside of there, though. Unfortunately, I can't read any of this. Oh, man, oh, man, do I have to cut that one out. <laughs> and then this is the overarching world. A tiny little castle down there. And then that's what the back looks like. Let's go ahead and load this game in. There we go. This is what it looks like when you start the game. assuming this is where I name myself, but I'm not sure what the letters are here. Alright, with a little bit of finicking around, I finally was able to get it to uh, pull up some gameplay. So as you see right here, it looks like we're in some kind of dungeon. I'm not sure if this is the beginning of the game or something that was already saved on there. Looks like there's some guy right there. I'm not sure what I'm saying to him. But I somehow accessed some kind of terminal. Interesting. Oh wow. So when you turn around, you're actually able to move through the area. So it seems like it's a bit of a dungeon crawler. Some kind of guy right there. Looks like I can't go that way. I think this might be somebody who's selling something. But yeah, this is what the, uh, the game looks like when it's on. Click reset, and then turn it off. Alright, now let's go ahead and put this one inside as well. Alright, let's go ahead and put the game inside. This is what the game looks like when you start it up. I think it's asking me to select what character or save file. Or maybe not. I'm just gonna. Maybe that'll work. Start. No, nothing. Oh, wait. I think that it might be asking me to give them status effects or um, upgrades to certain stats, I mean. Yeah, this is definitely a classic dungeon crawler. I feel like this is the first one. I actually borrowed these from my friend who's a collector because they are in such perfect condition and I know that these are number one and two but because I can't read the oh it looks like I found a chest the text it makes it a little bit hard but this gameplay definitely looks like it's aged a little bit more than the other let's go ahead and reset turn it off this has been the Japanese portable Famicom system. Today we have a bit of a special video. We're going to be doing a bunch of different stationary objects. We 
you have these pencils right here. A pencil sharpener. And then we also have some magnetic cat bookmarks. Let's go ahead and check them out. Right here we have some HB number two animal flocked pencils. There's four of them in here. This one looks like a giraffe, zebra, tiger, and that's either a lizard or a crocodile. That's what the back looks like. Let's go ahead and open it up. I didn't realize when I got these that they are going to be textured. I just realized that right now from touching them. If you rub the pencil, it has kind of a fuzzy kind of texture to it. Let's go ahead and put these down for a second. cute teddy bear. It is a pencil sharpener. And as you see from the bottom right here, it's really interesting. It actually screws on to the top of a water bottle. I don't have a water bottle around me right now, otherwise I'd test that out. It says plastic bottle pencil sharpener. And it says some stuff in Japanese. This is the instructions. You screw it on the top, insert the pencil, and then the bottle collects the pencil shavings. Let's go ahead and open it up. This is what the bear looks like. It's really cute. Very easy to open right here. It's where you put in the pencil shavings. You can see the blade inside. And it has the grooves for the water bottle. Let's go ahead and put that down as well. These are Daiso Meow Magnetic Bookmarks, four pieces. These were $1.50. This is what the cat's faces look like. I think that one right there is my favorite. The back of them has the same print of the face. It says it's made in China. Let's go ahead and open these up. Looks like these slip right off of here. And they clip together. There's the black cat. Black and white cat with green eyes. We have the pink strawberry cat, it looks like. The surprised calico. You 
might be wondering why I have all these things together. Well, let's pull out my trusty notebook. And oh, I got actual cat hair on there, sorry. <laughs> let's go ahead and test these out. Let's go ahead and open this and set it to the side. And start off with, I think we'll do the tiger. Put this down below here so it catches the shavings. there. Well, it looks like I broke off the lead tip. There we go. I've never been the best at sharpening pencils. I always tend to overdo it push that back a little bit. Yeah, it works. Go ahead and close this up. This was the bare bottle sharpener. Seems to have, let me zoom in a little bit. Seems to have done a pretty decent job. It was my fault that I went too far. I probably have a piece of lead stuck in there preventing me from getting the perfect tip. I'll have to clean it out later, but it definitely is working. Let's go ahead and put that to the side. Move these shavings out of the way. And now let's pick up the trusty notebook. It says, hello from last time. And surprisingly, on my marker video, it actually didn't leak through on the other side. So let's say, I love you guys I love you guys you know my handwriting has never been the best <laughs> recording on a video is a little bit more embarrassing than I like to admit but I did it anyways because <laughs> I love you guys and you've been supporting me quite a bit and now let's go to the next page. And let's say you want to keep this page special and you want to be able to come back to it fast. Let's go ahead and bookmark this page. There we go. Page is now saved. Let's go a few more pages in. Let's bookmark this page because it has a important recipe on there that you don't want to forget. There we go. Maybe you made some notes for school and you need to get to them fast. Or maybe you just don't have a good memory and you need to keep your spot in your book because you don't know where you left off. I put them a little bit uh, off center so that you could see the differences. And then also maybe you wanted to pull on the black cat's head instead and get to that page. And then that cat right there. There we go. So this has been the stationary review of the magnetic clips. The fuzzy animal pencils. the bare bottle sharpener, 
which sharpened the Tiger pencil. And yeah, today we have another Gacho toy from Sumiko Garashi. This one is a different kind of one. It has a different boxing, and you have the ability to get um, different characters in this one. I picked this one up from Daiso Japan. This is what the front looks like. We have some characters on here. It looks like we have a cat and a bear and maybe a dinosaur. It has an interesting pattern at the bottom. This is what the side looks like. We have Tokage, Penguin, question <laughs> mark. Um, the same one before, Ibuforai no Shippo, Shirokuma, Neko, and then Tonkatsu and Ibuforai no Shippo. I botched that up a little bit probably, but the one that I want the most is going to be the cat right there, the Neko. And then this is what the other side looks like. It says one plush keychain per box. And then the bottom right here has a shiny sticker that says San X. Trademark Sumiko Garashi. Without further ado, let's unbox it and see which one I get. I'm excited. And we got Oh, this one's cute. Which one is this? This time we got Takage. And it looks like the top is supposed to be salmon. Let's go ahead and move that to the side. I'll zoom in on it. This is what the front looks like. It's made out of a really soft plush material. And this right here it almost feels like it's made out of a wool. This is supposed to be the rice. And this is the top. It has uh, printed lines to make it look like salmon. You can attach this right here, you see, to your keychain. It has a little hook. And then the back, it looks like, I think this one might be a dinosaur. It has a little felt thing right there to give it its spikes. And cute little feet as well. This is the tag. Sumiko Garashi. 2017 San Exco it says it was not sure if it's manufactured in Ontario California or it might just be one of their design areas and it was made with polyester fiber plastic pellet and then it says to surface wash this only. But yeah, this has been the Sumiko Garashi gotcha toy. And I'm actually really happy with this one. I think it's really cute. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set it on my desk with some of the other collectibles I have now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you 